Hey everyone, welcome to the next installment of a fireside chat. We are tired of being in, inside, so we're coming to you from our backyard and Heather's working on providing some fire so that we can live up to the title of what we're doing. Um, it's not gonna stick around very we long. Are, we are beside a fire yeah. so of some sort. There was fire there for a couple of seconds. Fireless fireside chat. I know you're enjoying <laughs> the weather. I know people are excited about the next phase in uh, the COVID-19 restrictions and response and the leadership of our governor. Uh, many of you like me are excited about getting back to church. That's not as close as we want it to be. Uh, many people are wondering, hey, what is our church's preparedness plan gonna look like? We are rapidly working to finalize that. It will most likely be ready to share next week. But because we're restricted to groups of 10 or less, we're not close to being able uh, to provide services like some of you uh, love and miss, just like I love and miss. Yeah. But uh, know that we are working uh, on that plan. And when the, uh, the guidelines allow for that, we will be prepared for that. As you are navigating uh, the new reality of being able to be in groups of 10 or less, uh, let me share with you uh, what, we're, what we're trying to emphasize as a church. If you're getting together with people uh, six feet apart, social distancing, unless you're married to the person or you live in the same house, we don't have to be six feet apart. Uh, always wear a mask. And when you're outside and you're maintaining social distancing, you don't necessarily have to wear a mask, but it's strongly encouraged. It's been explained to me by some of our doctors this way. If just 60% of folks would wear a mask and those masks were only 60% effective, we would end this pandemic. So I'm saying, let's just put the mask on because it is an expression of love for other people. And it really is effective. I know people disagree, but the smartest people in the room are telling me it's effective. So let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Also, I lost my mask. So Heather's stuck at home. Right. I just gotta... throwing that out there. If one were to appear on my porch, I would be so grateful. All right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get you a mask, babe. Hey, uh, this weekend we're doing a Q&A weekend and it's not going to be a typical message, but I'm responding to the questions that folks out there have. These are super fun. Um, we love them because it gives everyone an opportunity to ask questions about tough scriptures they don't understand. Um, they ask questions, any kind of question. It can remain anonymous. It doesn't have to remain anonymous, but we love it because it gives you an opportunity to do that. And we really feel like every question deserves an answer. Absolutely. Uh, you oh, you responded overwhelmingly. I got more questions than I can ever hope to answer. I got eight pages full of, of questions, but uh, we wanted to take a chance to uh, answer a couple of those questions in this video instead of including them in this weekend service. And the first question is one that you can probably relate to, uh, whether you have young kids, older kids, or maybe even no kids in, in the house. And the question was essentially this, my family is loving uh, the amount of time that we're spending together. When we go back to life in a similar expression of what it used to look like and everybody is out of the house and they're back to busy schedules, how do we maintain these things that we've come to enjoy? Yeah, I think it's logical to think about that. And I've been thinking about the same thing, like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to see my daughter. She's 16. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's important to maintain family tradition of saying, you know what? Monday night is that night that we sit around the table together and we have dinner, no matter what, no exceptions. That's the night that we do it or whatever night uh, works best for you. But making sure that you do have things in place that are like, hey, I really like this. Even, I mean, ask your kids. What have you, what are some of the great things you've enjoyed about being home together all the time? Yeah. Um, if you could think about one of those things and talk as a family about what are some of the things you'd like to keep? And the reality is not everything that we're enjoying during this time is going to be able to last. One of our new family traditions is we get up on Sunday morning, we make breakfast and then we watch church together. Yeah. That's not going to happen anymore. No. <laughs> Once once we get back to being able to meet together. You would lose your job. I would lose my job and right. I like my job. <laughs> it's a pretty great weekend job. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, find the things that are important to you and, and come up with a plan together to, to keep those. I think that's pretty important. Yeah, I think so too. And when you're talking, especially if you've got kids, it's important to talk about why those things are important to you, not just what you do. Help them connect to the why behind the why. Right. All right, here's another question. And this is really going to target everyone with uh, with the younger kids. And so people want to know right now, watching church on TV, the message is really designed for, for adults or for teenagers who are older than, than my kids. Yeah. Um, it's tough for them. Should I make them watch or is that a hill that's not even worth dying on? 
That's a tough question because you want to be able to encourage their spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, you don't want them to resent it. That's right. Uh, so that's hard. The, well, <laughs> what's behind that question is why we have student ministry. It's why we have children's ministries because we want to communicate the gospel and we want to communicate all of God's word. We want to communicate the Christian life uh, to teenagers and students in environments and in ways that they can understand that matches their cognitive development. Yeah. And a service that a weekend service that's crafted for adults is not going to match the cognitive development of kids and teenagers. And so that's why we do that. Right now we're limited in what we're able to provide. I'm very grateful for our student ministry team, what they're providing on mm -hmm. Sunday nights. I would say encourage your kids to stay a part of that. Absolutely. I, I love what Robert Nash is doing, what he and his team with those videos. Utilize that. But if you recognize that your kids are having a hard time connecting to that, I say it's a crime. I, I think it's a crime to bore kids with church. And so as parents, we got to make judgment calls. And if that's not working for your younger kids, man, find a, find something that does work for your kids. Last week, we mentioned The Chosen. Yes. And we like watching that uh, online series about uh, some of the characters surrounding Jesus's life uh, because our kids love it and they're asking fantastic questions all throughout the episode. I'm hitting pause and we're talking about mm -hmm. Jesus. We're talking about these folks. We're answering their questions. I think it's also quite yeah. great and it's okay to switch it up for your kids. Mm -hmm. So it's not the same every week. It's, I mean, we need to try and keep it engaging for them as well. Um, we, we can relate to that. Yes. I mean, my kids right now, they're when they're watching on they're watching me preach at them on TV. I can relate to what <laughs> you're experiencing. That is not, that is not a fantastic user experience for them. No. Yeah. It's not. So, you know what I recently, we recently discovered this this week, the Bible Project. If you've never heard of the Bible Project, you got to go check out the Bible Project. Check out their web, just Google the Bible Project. Yeah. Fantastic animated videos um, that represent dynamic uh, quality, deep scholarship, and it's communicated in a very accessible way for people of all ages. They have a Roku channel. Yeah. And I just discovered that I'm excited about watching the Bible Project videos on the big screen with our kids. I am too. I really like the Bible Project. And for somebody who's more visual, like my son, yeah. um, it's a great way for him to understand biblical concepts in an engaging way. Not to mention, take advantage of the Right Now Media resource that's available to all of you for free because you're connected to Autumn Ridge. Uh, if, you, if you don't know how to do that, man, you got to email us at, at the church. Uh, we want to make sure that that's clear for how you to, for how you can get engaged in that. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of series and Bible studies, things designed for people at every stage, especially for kids. So moms and dads, don't feel like it's all or nothing. If your kids don't enjoy hearing me preach, I understand. I got kids who don't always enjoy <laughs> hearing me preach. There are other tools at your disposal and you get to be the primary spiritual leader of your kids. I would say just don't give up on trying to crack the code on what's most effective for them. No one knows them better than you do. No one loves them more than you do. No one is as positioned as well as you are to lead your kids. So um, be encouraged by that. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks for joining us in our backyard. And uh, I hope you enjoy the weekend service. I'm excited. I'm excited. We too. think every question deserves an answer. And hopefully this is something that some of your friends uh, will want to tune into. And it's our hope, and it's something that I'm praying for, that those who have probably tuned out of church and are tuning back in are people who have a kind of a cautious, wobbly relationship with church, that this would be something to cause them to say, you know what, I want to hear more. So. Do me a favor, and uh, if you enjoy the service, like it and share it on your social media. Guys, have a great week. Have a great week, everyone.